Bet you never thought you'd see this face again, huh? So for those of you following me on social media, you recognize that I revamped the Twitter and the Facebook page, right? If you don't know who this is, it's your boy, the Rap Ninja. I'm why this channel was popping to begin with. Now, you heard all that razzle-dazzle and accolades about comments. Some of the comments probably weren't read, were in relation to me. Now, what does that mean for you watching? Well, no new hot freestyles coming. But because I got more rhythm than a suburb and subdivision, I am going to be back on Twitch. That's right. October is going to get a little spooky. It's going to get a little crazy. Me and my boys are going to be doing some stuff. Shout out to DJ Raimi. Shout out to Hobo Ninja. Blah, 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 blah. These are all throwbacks. These are all Easter eggs, whatever you want to call them. But I will be on Twitch, and I'll be playing some Mortal Kombat 11. Yes, I'll be playing the story mode as far as I can, if not in its entirety, on Twitch. So stay tuned for that. And again, I'll be sharing that with your boy of the yellow hat guy on his Twitch. That is twitch.tv slash Captain Sensation. Okay, so check all that out. Uh, I just want to shout out to him on the thousand subs. You know, he piggybacked a lot of my subscribers, but it is what it is. And uh, thank all of you for watching. So with <laughs>
Awesome video, fam. Love some Mario, also from the Virgin Rose. Thanks for playing my level from Genome 44. That's from one of these Mario Maker videos. Here's a, another comment in response to my comment from LJ Russi. This was fun to watch. I don't really like to watch videos of people playing, let alone a long video like this. But I could watch an episode of 100 or a person of interest. Uh, a couple of my current shows. So long and short without trying to open up the comments, she also adds saying, this seems fun. I lost interest in games like this. I'm stuck on playing Hearthstone and Paladins. Uh, long and short, this person enjoyed watching this video. I played a level called Choose Wisely on Mario Maker. If you guys aren't watching these Mario Maker videos, I suggest you look at those. Why? Well, they're kind of like Saturday morning cartoons. I watch Dash EXP, uh, he gets very animated and is in character when he's playing these. And uh, whether you're bored of Mario or you love Mario like myself, they're enjoyable. Saturday morning cartoons aren't what they used to be, but his element of slapstick makes me feel like that. And I wanted to emulate that in some of my videos, minus, you know, maybe the language. I'm not one of these, hey guys, how's it going? I'm not one of those types of YouTubers. Uh, but maybe I can be. I'm not really trying to change for that to appeal. But, you know, if that works and it's something that you guys want, I'm open to suggestions. That being said, I really enjoyed making that video because I felt like that was just a, hey, let me see what happens type of deal. Whereas some of these other levels and things that happen, you may already know what happens. You're just sitting going through the motions to see it, right? So thank you, LJ Russi, for that comment. Let's show some more here. And let me tell you, it was a pain just to get the comment section. YouTube, if you're looking at this, or I say when you do, you got to fix that. Within the app, I should be able to see all my comments, not going through Safari or Google Chrome. I shouldn't have to get on my webcam on my camera to do that either, which is, you know, defeats the purpose. I don't want to be in my room where my laptop is. I want to be right here with all of you and it took maybe a half hour for me to find this stuff very annoying and maybe they're like all you had to do is what you did but it should be something right within the app activity comments I did that through Safari and it routed me to my history my watch history but nowhere was there an option to see my actual comments moving forward uh, somebody says Christy Dudley excuse me Personally, I'm excited about the Nintendo Switch Lite for my kids. My five-year-old loves playing the Switch, but he is constantly getting the controllers disconnected and losing them, so the Lite will be perfect for him. And that's who it's marketed for. It's really a, and I've said this in other videos, it's like an alternative. It's a backup, if you will, to your already existing Switch. So if you have the Switch, the new Switch, or eventually a Switch Pro, Switch Lite might be just a little side system for you. Hey, uh... I'm going to take this one directly in the go and leave my other Switch at home or my little brother, my little sister, cousin. When they come over, here's another system that they can play on and we can play the same games, yada, yada. That's that's how that works, okay? Uh, thinking about, this is Trace, Tracy Belante. Thinking about getting a Switch feels like the Switch Lite would be just a fancier DS. Interested to see if you do a vid trying it out. That will require me to waste my money on one of those. I don't think I'm the target audience for that. So uh, that doesn't mean I have to buy it, right? I could also just borrow one from somebody and check it out. That could be in the cards. I did get the Pokemon uh, Go Plus for that reason, just to try it out and show you guys. Austin Hughes says, cool meeting you today and love the videos, man. Keep up the good work. Thank you, Austin. I appreciate your support. Austin, by the way, was the winner for some of you who've been asking, who won that, you know, classic N system? You know, the NES clone, Austin won that. So, and I only knew Austin maybe a couple of weeks and he subscribed and look what happens. More contests on the way, it just takes time. We want to grow this, you know. I'll get into more of that later on where the channel is and where it needs to go. But let's get more into these. Inkwell Thinking asks, been trying to think of an interesting question. <laughs> well, you're on, right? This is kind of what the Game Grumps did to me. What non-video game piece of media would you love to see made into a video game? Alternatively, 
which video game adaptation of non-video game media is your favorite? Hmm. Right now, I'll start with the second question first. I think Detective Pikachu is my favorite because I think that one held up. You look at all the video game movies, majority of them are bad, if not all of them being bad, other than Detective Pikachu. That was, on its own, a good movie. I, I like the Mortal Kombat, the first movie. Second one, not so much, but uh, the Mario Bros. movie is terrible. That new Sonic movie coming out looks awful. I'm not saying it's awful. I'm saying it looks awful. It'll, in all likelihood, be awful, but got to give it a chance. They delayed it, so sometime in February, I think right around Valentine's Day, that movie should drop, and we'll see how much changes they've done and if it was good or not. But those are the comic book movies. I'm sorry, not comic book movies. It's a whole different conversation. Those are the video game movies that come to mind. I know there was those Tomb Raider movies and the Resident Evil movies, which those were okay. Some of those Resident Evil, I think the first couple, I, I, I enjoyed watching those. The first Tomb Raider was, eh. Don't get me wrong, they weren't bad. They just weren't like, oh, I want to buy the video game because of this. Or, oh, this was faithful to the video game. So, uh, a non-video game piece of media that I would love to see turn into a video game. Let's think about that one. Because there's a lot of comic book, uh, a lot of comic book series that could be turned into video game properties. And they've already done uh, Batman. They've already done Spider-Man. They've already done Ninja Turtles. I mean, comic books, whenever there's a movie coming out, they usually translate that over into a game some way, somehow. It would be interesting to see if the Rocksteady Studios, who developed that Arkham Asylum, if they're going to take Superman and do something faithful in that vein because it's been a while since superman 64 they need something better than that you know what i mean that would be my short answer i haven't really put a lot of thought into it non-video game wise what should be turned into you know i'm sure there's some kind of will smith you know what is there a matrix video game i think that would be interesting right those matrix movies i don't know if there was a video game for that if there hasn't we've got matrix 4 that they're talking about coming out with the series, that should be it. And when I think about it too, Daredevil. I would I would be interested in seeing a uh, Daredevil video game, you know, from the Netflix series. Something like that. I know Punisher's had some video games, but I don't think we've had a Daredevil video game, you know. So and they had a couple of movies come out, and we never really had a, a series. Yet. If I'm wrong, forgive me, but it probably wasn't that good if I can't remember uh, that series. So thank you, Inkwell Thinking, for that question. I appreciate, or those questions, I appreciate those. Donald J. Trump from the trenches. Spam account, I don't know. But Donald asks, do you feel it when it's running or off? And this is in regards to a story time video I did, more like a how-to this was when I put lacquer thinner in my gas tank to clear out the impurities for the catalytic converter. It worked for a little bit. Follow-up is the check engine light came back on, so it might be one of those things. Hey, about to pass, need to pass inspection. This is when I put that in there. Otherwise, not really worth it. But uh, you want to make sure the car is off. If you try something like that, the car always needs to be off. Never when it's on. When you put any kind of additive, just like when you put gas, car needs to be off. Some people leave the car on, but the engine or the, or the gas off, you know, they just leave it slightly cranked so you can hear the music. Just so that you remember, because some of you have these newer cars and stuff, you can't tell when they're on and off unless they're in reverse, these hybrids. Just keep the car off. That's, that's kind of how you want to do it. Moving forward, let's load up some more. Uh, very nicely put together, bro. I had a nice time filming, uh, filming this. Excuse me. That's what uh, Eric Pittman says. Thank you for that comment, Eric. Shout out to Eric Pittman. He's the guy who uh, helped film the new intro that you're probably seeing in some of these Pokemon Go videos and other videos. 
Jlove81. Shout out to Jlove81. She's also a retro gamer and collector. Got to meet her at SEGE. She goes, great video. Enjoy the footage. It was a pleasure meeting you. Hope to see you again next year. Thank you, Jlove. Alpha Karama, or Alpha Rakama, I can't talk today, y'all. From Rakama Productions, y'all remember Alpha for some of my videos. He goes, congrats on hitting 1K. Yeah, so 1,000 subscribers, back at it again. We're actually a little bit over that now, another 100 subscribers uh, later. It's been a little bit late to follow up on that. Uh, from J Love, NES Attic, shout out to him. He has a nice meeting at SEGE, appreciate that. Mr. Moocher777, who I also met there, really good content, man. I enjoy your narration a lot. I hope without all the errors and uh, misspeaking I've done in this video, you enjoy this one too. So let's see here. We've got some others here. A.S. Lang says... I like Captain Sensation better than other Yellow Hat Guy. Just my thoughts. So that's that's an interesting comment because some people always ask that. They see Captain Sensation there and they're like, why is it Captain Sensation when you're other Yellow Hat Guy? Or why are you other Yellow Hat Guy but the, the, the little mark says Captain Sensation? Well, to clarify all that, other Yellow Hat Guy is the brand, okay? That's who I am now. In other parts of the channel and other parts of the video, you see the Rap Ninja, right? The Rap Ninja is who sparked this channel off. That's really why people watch the channel to begin with, if we're being honest. YouTube, when I started out May, May 13th, uh, 2006, yeah, a long time ago, and you're like, well, your channel should be much higher then. But I didn't really take it that serious, right? YouTube was an, a different playing field. You could see Will Ferrell eat a sandwich in a silly way or something like that. And if you responded to that, your video is automatically linked to that because people would see the responses on the side. So you got extra promotion just off of the strength of Will Ferrell. Whether the video is good or not, you were lumped in with a whole bunch of other videos that were set for autoplay. And that worked for a while for people who were trying to get famous, trying to get discovered, and you didn't have to have high quality videos because you didn't have these fancy iPhones. You didn't have everyone having a, a cell phone in their hand that was capable of showing quality video and having quality internet, yada, yada, I could go on. Boogie 2988, he started out with an iToy, you know, the PS2 camera, and that's how he's filming his videos and, you know, whatever he's at subscriber-wise now, there you go. So my point is this, it was a different animal, it was the Wild West on YouTube back in those days. Eventually people exploit that and, you know, clickbaity titles and showing their body and videos to get extra views. Now YouTube is different and you can't really do that. You've got to constantly put out content, your tags have to be great, you've got to do all kinds of things as an up-and-coming uh, creator to do this, but... I still do it for fun. I do it for you guys, but I also do it for myself. If I entertain myself and I'm enjoying the content, then I'm doing a good job. I would like to look back and say, hey, with my free time, I reached out and shared that with others. And if they enjoyed it, I was at least compensated for some of that. And I would be doing stuff like this anyway. Maybe not dressing up in a suit with a yellow hat, but going out here in the city playing Pokemon Go or, you know, streaming some of this these video games. Maybe not streaming, but I'd be playing them anyway, so why not stream so somebody can watch? And maybe uh, I lose the save files, but the video content is there on, on the internet forever for somebody to see, oh, he did beat Link to the Past. Yeah, I didn't believe him because he's not that good, but he did beat Link to the Past. Speaking of Link to the Past, there will be a playthrough of that coming soon, so stay tuned uh, in a few days. Or whenever this video goes up, a few weeks, what have you, you will see that in its entirety up on the YouTube channel. I'm playing it now on Twitch. For those of you following, you've been seeing that uh, consistently over the last few days and weeks. So uh, appreciate those of you watching. And for those of you who haven't seen the YouTube yet, check that out. So yeah, if you look at Cinemassacre, 
that's the channel of who? The Angry Video Game Nerds. If you're into gaming or just, you know, YouTube in general, you'll see, hey, that guy's been doing this for years. He's His channel's not called Angry Video Game Nerd. And most of you don't type in Cinemassacre, I assume. You probably just type in AVGN or Angry Video Game Nerd or something of that uh, deviation. And Cinemassacre pops up. He has his website, Cinemassacre.com. Captain Sensation was my superhero. That's what I wanted to create. That's what I have a copyright for, for like some kind of short story. And I was like, hey, let's go ahead and uh, create my own superhero. It was derivative of Stupendous Man from the Calvin and Hobbes series, where he's in his own mind. He's kind of neurotic. He's, you know, just believing in himself enough to say, hey, I have my own courage, my own self-confidence to do my own thing. And I held that for many years, didn't really do anything with it, but uh, I decided to keep it going. I had the t-shirt already, so you've seen that in videos. Here we are, Captain Sensation, but other Yellow Hat guys, its own thing. Why? YouTube has changed, like I mentioned. Cursing in the videos and doing things for shock value, being edgy. You can fool, you can fake the funk for a while, but how many edgy videos can you come up with all the time? Eventually, people are going to grow up and outgrow you. Your audience will outgrow that kind of content. You've got employers and family who are going to look at your channel. And that's a lot more work for somebody who... Uh, has, I feel like I've grown, so a lot of the Rap Ninja content isn't reflective of me. So that creates a challenge in of itself. How can I continue doing Rap Ninja, if at all, and uh, still have the youth look at my channel, the, the marketers, the vendors. They don't want to see me up here. You blah, 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 you mother father. They're not interested in all that. Coca-Cola doesn't want to slap an ad on a video that's got me saying that. Some of these other guys can still have successful channels and it not be a thing, and that's fine. But when I pull up a video and say, hey, man, subscribe to Captain Sensation, I'm hoping that the first five words that comes out of the five seconds of the video isn't one of those words. So that's why also I'm not really cursing in these videos. I'm, I'm not really trying to be family friendly, but I want that appeal so that anybody can pick up and watch and, and appreciate the content there. So you may not like everything here, but hopefully you at least learn something and you can appreciate the way the information is being conveyed to, if not yourself, but somebody else that you know that is into uh, the kind of content that's here on this channel. So great question or great comment answer. I appreciate that. Because he followed up with that saying, where or whom inspired you to be the other? I have an idea, but this seems like a good time to ask before I watch another video. So yeah, so piggyback off of that. Other part, you know, it's not Curious George. Other yellow hat guys stem from probably some other guys wearing yellow hats. Rob Leefield, a creator who is most notably recognized for his creation in Deadpool, right? He's the co-creator. He's the artist. He did that. He's done some, you know, other characters like Cable. He's created Youngblood. And, you know, you could look up his resume. He gets some flack from some people based off of the way he draws these characters. He's created these uh, styles of guys with, you know, lots of huge biceps and maybe some muscles that the human body doesn't have. But that style was hyperkinetic. A lot of people like that in the 90s and still today, you know, he's doing his tours for a lot of these movies and creations. And I've got no problem with Rob. You know, you either if you don't like it, don't buy it. But enough people out there like it that they continue to purchase it. It's all his art. It's all his creation. It's his style. So it's not like he's copying somebody else or tracing or stealing or anything like that. So a, a guy actually came up to him with a book trying to insult him how to draw the Marvel comics way. So that was my first uh, inkling of that guy. So when we talk shock videos and value, somebody recorded this, and although he didn't become famous, he became more infamous. But you've got that saying like a guy like Keemstar would probably subscribe to, which is, uh, bad news is still news. You know? So... The word is still getting out there about you, If even if you're doing something bad. People are still learning about you, but you do something good, 
It may not get out there. You do something that you're supposed to be doing or that you think is cool. It's not like it's going to make notoriety, right? I've got this video out, 1,000 subscribers. I'm hoping that a lot of you watch it. But let's say I did something horrific. Maybe people come back and look at it because they want to know what kind of person I am or was at whatever point in time in history uh, my life changes or takes a different course for better or for worse. So this guy did that and became infamous. A lot of creators had backlash. I'm like, this is not what you do to people, whether you like him or not, or he's a good guy or a bad guy. You don't, you don't do that. So that was disrespectful, right? And again, YouTube started out around that time. Maybe that was 2009, 2008. I can't remember. But I was like, well, I'm the other yellow hat guy because this guy, I don't want to be linked to him, but maybe just the strength of a guy bearing a yellow hat, all right? People, you stand out with the yellow hat. So when people see him on the streets, they know, hey, he's filming. We've seen him. Even if we don't like his videos, you know, we know something about this dude. So I, why not? I had this for cosplay to wear as Wario. I go to some of these conventions and cosplay because that was fun, dressing up as War or Mario, Luigi, Waluigi. Simple yellow hat, I just didn't put the W on, I've got that somewhere, but guess what? There's somebody else who's in the video games with the Wario theme. <clears throat> this guy's no longer here with us, I had some videos up about him and being proud of him, but I won't go into details of why... why uh, those videos aren't public anymore, but you can look up Justin Carmichael on your own and deduce why. But long and short, it was homage to him and saying, hey, I appreciate it that he's pulling up these obscure games. And, you know, he had a few thousand, you know, maybe 10,000 subscribers or something like that. But he was constantly out there and it looked like he was having fun with what it was he was doing. And, you know, I thought that was cool. Again, I'm not out here trying to be PewDiePie. I don't necessarily aspire to be the biggest content creator. But these are the things I'm doing anyway. And if it could help me with some bills, help me help some other people out, help my community, why not sit here in front of the camera and talk to you guys if it makes your life a little bit easier, if it makes your day go by a little bit faster, more pleasant. It's a win-win for everybody, right? I think we can all agree with that. So if you're watching this and please go back and look at some other videos too if you're on the same wavelength I'm on right now in this present time. So speaking of wavelengths, no longer on some of these other ones, so that's why I'm the other yellow hat guy. So I hope that answers that question. This video is uh, already long as I thought it would be, but longer than that. So let's try to get some more comments here. We'll do a, a couple more, and then we'll wrap it up. Ultimate Comics M. Jackson says, If you have an Alexa, name the ghost that. Or maybe name it after one of your viewers. And then he follows up, or she follows up, saying, How did you get so many subscribers? So, to answer that first one, should I name the ghost Alexa, every time I say Alexa, then that's going to create problems in the house. So I see what you did there. Name it after one of the viewers. That is interesting. I don't know if people want that, but who knows? That might be a whole different contest or prize or something. As far as how I got so many subscribers, it was a long grind, man. It was, you know putting up these Facebook ads and paying YouTube for YouTube AdSense and things like that. Word of mouth, word on the street. Shout out to everybody again who, you know, subscribed to me. That's pretty much how I did it. It wasn't as successful as some others, some other people have done it. But for me, just to get that 1,000 mark, it is what it is. Now, people think, oh, so you're getting paid now that you're at 1,000, right? No. No. Unfortunately, you get the thousand. That was the benchmark a long time ago. See, I had a Fred video where, hey, it's me, Fred, where he debuted and made millions of subscribers and dollars, most likely off of YouTube. He actually came here to Greensboro uh, Coliseum where they had a WWE event where John Cena, you know, on his show and those movies was playing his father. 
it was a one for one or two for two or a two hand a bird with one stone. I, I can't do cliches right now. But it was a win-win where Fred got to appear on SmackDown after the, or maybe he wasn't on SmackDown. I think after they cut SmackDown, they did extra footage because they were already there where they they did uh, extra footage since they were already there and had scenery where John Cena and Fred could wrestle together and they could put that footage for the Fred movie. So uh, that video went somewhat viral for me and YouTube asked me to be a partner, which I agreed, but it's like, hey, I just recorded wrestling and people wanted to see Fred. It wasn't because of me. Now, you have lots of channels out there that they just record other things or have music or whatever, and they get lots of clicks and likes and subscriptions just off the strength of that because they're adding value to people's lives. But is it really them themselves? No. So I don't know how they make money, if they're profitable or not. They're probably doing what I do, which is Patreon. I do get paid through that, so shout out to my Patreon subscribers. I appreciate each and every one of you. Uh, for as little as a dollar a month, you guys could help out with that if you want. A lot of this money is spent on keeping my lights on. It's spent uh, for these prizes in the community, Pokemon Go High Point. It's spent in the city helping people out here. So it's not like I'm just taking all this money and buying mansions and Ferraris. So you know, please consider that when you become a Patreon. I know e-begging, as they call it, the kids call it today, isn't popular or whatever, but you know, it doesn't hurt to ask closed mouth doesn't get fed and all those things so if you choose to you know help me out in that form that's that's a great help because youtube is just one platform i'm also trying to get affiliate with twitch we're almost there we just need an average of three viewers just three so three of you could just tune in when i'm you know uh making videos that would help out so you know stay tuned to the end of this video because there may be something going on on Twitch right after that. So stay tuned for that. So I hope that answers that. You just got to really do it. You know, somebody asked Will Ferrell, how do you just get out here and make movies and be funny? You just kind of have to do it. It's the Malcolm Gladwell 10,000 hour rule. You know, you make a video, it's probably going to be terrible if you've never done it before. But it's just like anything else. But the more you do it and practice, just get better. Don't worry about the negative comments. There's a lot of comments here I'm not reading because they're not appropriate or they're just negative or there's whatever. But there's also a lot of good stuff that I'm reading here too in this video. But some of these video, some of these comments are from recent times and some, you know, maybe way yesteryear. You just, but as long as you're constantly improving and making better videos and learning new techniques, there, I wouldn't worry about uh, the negativity. Now there's constructive criticism that you get. Take that in mind. If that helps improve these videos, you should do that. Uh, but you just have to do it. Just get out there and make make videos. And again, have a reason not to get famous or rich or whatever. If that's what you want to do, fine. But just know that that's like playing the lottery. You gotta you gotta play to win. But only a couple people are gonna win out of the millions that are paying to get in there. So understand that YouTube used to be underneath, you know, television and Netflix and all that. And now they're probably above television for sure everybody watches youtube probably daily a lot of people do uh, it's it's a different animal now it's not just for silly ha ah, this is look at me do something silly a lot of it is hey this is informational these are vlogs these are tv shows it's movie quality now so i really feel like the videos i make today if i would have made those 10 years ago my subscriber number would be through the roof but I can't hold on to that. I can't worry about that. All I can do is be in this present moment and still do my best to make content. Uh, Sam Bartol says, name the ghost Gary, and then why the yellow hat? So we answered that, why the yellow hat. The ghost Gary, that's interesting. I'm not sure about that. We can uh, consider that. Matt Static Gaming says to Keen. Catherine Rhodes says, dude, our AC went out too. Frank figured out how to fix it too. That's in response to my uh, story time video when my AC went out a couple months back and how I was able to deal with that. So that being said, 
we are pretty much going to wrap it up here. I think I think that's enough comments for this video. If your comments uh, didn't get read, I apologize. There's still a bunch more I could go back and further uh, look at and appreciate, but I don't want to make this video go too long. But thank you guys for watching. Remember, follow up in the next part and see a little bit more of what's happening next, the future of this channel. Again, Link's Awakening will be... Uh, not Link's Awakening. A Link to the Past will be uh, up on the channel next month. And there will be some content there daily for you. I'm going to keep making some videos. i got some newer opportunities and goals coming up. Uh, this video... Reach the hands of Smile Direct Club. I'm constantly getting ads from them, and your boy is going to get liners. Yes, my teeth. You know, I am going to get those straightened out. So, for some of you who may be wondering, hey, you know, how old are you? Are you not using this YouTube money to do other things? I don't know what you're thinking. That's just maybe me being in my own mind thinking the worst, but uh, 2020, I'll be smiling more. So stay tuned for that, too. Um, I think I'm out of everything I wanted to cover. So uh, I owe it all to you guys. You know, I put in the work and the effort and really took the channel more seriously this year, changed in a different direction. And you guys stuck with me through, you know, some of the bad quality and some of the lack of updates and everything else. Uh, this was a rough year. You know, went through relationship changes, finance changes, job changes, just, you know, all kinds of stuff. You know, every day you wake up, you're five decisions away from ending up in the grave. And it takes a lot more effort just to keep going in a different direction. You'll, you may not understand what I mean by that, but maybe when you get a little older, if you're younger, you'll, you'll get what I'm, what I, where I'm going with that. But, uh, yeah, I'm lucky to be here, lucky to have each and every one of you, but, we're going to keep going forward and grow this channel. We're going to get the watch time we need for the channel to be monetization friendly. Or not friendly, but just to be profitable is what I'm trying to say. It's profitable on other avenues, but we need to keep the foot on the gas and go forward. So stay tuned. Captain Sensation. What up? Long time no see, right? If y'all remember, last go around, which would be years back, it's the rap ninja that's on this channel. What up? It is the... You know, bet you... Bet you never thought you'd see this face again. Why are you...